I don't think I could have told you what that word meant or what they were used for outside of somewhat related to tea until I started looking at vintage and antique knitting patterns. I believe the first tea cozy I ever came across was in this book from the 1940s called Practical Knitting Illustrated and it had a knitted and a crocheted tea cozy. Although at the time I didn't really know how popular they were and I didn't really feel any need to make one. It wasn't until I was watching an episode of Call the Midwife, one of my favorite shows, and they were having dinner and their teapot in the middle of the table had a tea cozy around it. It just really stood out to me. I mean, the entirety of the show, I feel like they have so many beautiful hand knit and hand crocheted items. I want to make all of them that I've seen, but that one in particular really stood out to me and it made me start thinking, Maybe I want a tea cozy as well. You may know that I keep a constant eye out for different antique knitting related things online and I got really lucky with a set of Weldon's Practical Needlework. In this volume, which is volume seven, you can tell from the seven stars here, there is a pattern for a tea cozy and that is the one that I am going to knit today. While the pattern is called the Bachelor's Tea Cozy, it does say that it can also be used by anyone else and I thought it would still be okay even though I personally am not a bachelor. This tea cozy is made up of four separate knit panels and it has you start with the outer panel that is made up of brioche knitting and it recommends a blue wool. A few weeks ago, I started knitting my very first brioche project and I'm so glad that I did because I didn't realize how much brioche knitting I would be doing from antique patterns. I don't think that I would have had the guts to knit this pattern had I not already learned how to do brioche knitting before, although honestly, now that I know it, brioche knitting is not that difficult. I had to work on this pattern until I had a piece that was eight inches tall. Now that I had knit eight inches of this brioche panel, I was done with this outer layer and following the knitting pattern, the next step was to knit the inner lining. The inner lining is suggested to use a pink wool. So I used a pink yarn that I had in my stash. I went ahead and I did some stash shopping for this project. So the pink wool is an Andean treasure that I always love using. It's an alpaca yarn and the blue wool is a Germantown wool. I'll leave the links to the yarns in the description, but they are very common yarns that I like to use very frequently. The back panel or the inner lining is made up of a simple garter stitch and it is made one inch taller than the outer layer, so it's nine inches tall in this garter panel. The knitting pattern then has you repeat these two panels, so you have two times the inner panels and two times the outer layers, and then you have to seam them together. The first step is to add the inner lining to the outer layer on each one of your panels. And I just decided to whip stitch them together only on the outer sides and not the underside of the lining. You don't have to be particularly neat, but this will be slightly visible in your final tea cozy, so you do want it to look somewhat neat when you do this. Once you have whipped together both sides of your lining and your outer layer, you do that again with your other set. So you have two new panels now of a lining and an outer layer that you are now going to seam together. You're only going to sew together one inch from the top though and two inches on the bottom because you want to leave an opening for the spout and the handle of your teapot. And I only sewed the blue pieces together because I just wanted to have a nice tucked away inside layer. The finishing touches of this teapot are to add some ribbon by threading it through the brioche layer of 
your tea cozy. The pattern suggests a pink ribbon. However, in my stash, the only ribbon that I had that was kind of the same color was a little bit more corally peach than pink, but hopefully it's not too, too noticeable and I still think it looks really cute. After you thread it through, you then tie a nice tight bow in the front and back and you pull out the center lining so that it has a nice ruffle on the top and now your tea cozy is completely ready for use. If you want to try making your own version of this tea cozy, I scanned in the entire knitting and crocheting sections of the Weldon's Practical Needle Workbook, and it's listed on my website at engineeringknits.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye!